Yeah, all right, let's get straight into it tonight. Joining me is Pauline Hanson's One Nation Chief of Staff, James Ashby, and Shadow Minister for Fisheries, Forestry and Environment, Senator Jonathan Dunningham. Gents, welcome to you. Let's stick with The, the Voice for a minute. Uh, Senator, you were there with Senator Price and Warren Mundine on Wednesday launching the No campaign. It's early days, but how do you see things going, particularly in your state of Tassie? Well, look, can I tell you, I think things are heading in the right direction, and that's based on the fact that Australians are thinking people. They don't like being taken for mugs. They want answers to the questions they're asking, and they are the same questions we've been asking in Parliament for a long time now. The answers aren't forthcoming, and the numbers are bearing out. Here in Tassie, uh, you've got a number of polls out at the moment, uh, but the majority of people indicating that they'll vote no because there's no detail about how it'll work, there's no detail about how to fix the problems we're told that need to be fixed. And so people are starting to rightly question, why would they vote yes? So that's where I see it going. And that's very much the sentiment that Jacinta and Warren got on the ground here in Tasmania this week when they were down here for the launch. I'll ask, uh, I'll ask James about this in a moment, but uh, do you have a, lo a local market in your area tomorrow, Saturday morning, and, and do you go to it? And the reason I'm asking the question, would you be game enough to wear a no T-shirt to that market? Well, um, I actually don't have a T-shirt yet, uh, but uh, I do have a local market, the Salamanca market. Wow. I'm pretty sure I'd be used for target practice down there if I wore it. But you know what? This is exactly the problem we have. We shouldn't be ashamed to uh, espouse an opinion that actually is about unity, is against racism and about making sure we are treated as one in this country. Uh, and that's what the No campaign is all about. And, you know, I walked down the street with a no badge on the day Jacinda and Warren were there, and I got a few looks, but nothing too terrible. So I might give the market a, a whirl with my T-shirt. Yeah, it's my point, Jonathan, and you're right. It shouldn't be like that. James, I mean, what about you? I mean, you are a No supporter. Uh, would you publicly wear one of those shirts? I mean, am I being, am I being gutless? Am I being cowardly by saying I wouldn't do that? Well, you've got to pick your markets, of course, Steve. I'm in Springshore. I'd have no problems wearing a no shirt here. But if you ask me to walk down the middle of uh, the Queen Street Mall in Brisbane, might be a different question. Um, look, the reality is I've, I'm off to a wedding this weekend and I know just the pre-drinks that people have had this afternoon in amongst a group there with people, they're all saying they're voting no. So regional parts of this state, Queensland, I can say for at very least, people out here are openly having those conversations. We don't need T-shirts to be able to start the conversation, but obviously, are you going to put something on your fence without the risk of having racist spray painted on your front palings? Look, these are the questions that I wouldn't put past these yobbos who get out there and are all for the Yes campaign to come and destroy your property if you're openly, uh, openly saying no to the voice to Parliament. Uh, I must say, uh, James, you look like you're on the set of Survivor. Oh, <laughs> Mate, I've been through some pretty rough towns on my trip through Queensland this week, but I tell you, this is a beautiful spot in Queensland. You, there's nothing about surviving in Springshore. It's a good town. <laughs> Jonathan, uh, you heard my, my remarks at, at the start of the program. Um, are you fearful of what Australia might look like on uh, October the 15th if this does go down and how those people who voted no are going to be regarded and treated and talked about? Yes, Steve, I'm fearful of how those who exercise their right to vote no on whatever basis that decision might be made. And in my case, and most of the people I talk to, it's very reasonable, fair thinking points that are being made. So whether it's a yes or a no that uh, gets up at the end of the day, I do worry about how those, the proponents of this voice, will weaponise the result against uh, those who voted no. Uh, because uh, if, if the yes case fails, they'll say it was because of racists. If the yes case gets up, it'll, they'll say, uh, you know, of course, that... Uh, uh, you know, we won, we overcame the racists and we need to make sure we drive them into the caves where they belong. And that's what worries me most. Look, most Australians don't want that and we need to make sure this debate, uh, at least from my point of view, I see that the no debate needs to be conducted in a civil way and I've seen that happen in Tasmania, thankfully, thus far. I'll get on to Richard Miles in a moment. James, what's the feeling now in Queensland? You've been uh, on the road this week. What, what have you picked up about The Voice? 
oh, no one's impressed by it. There, there's, there's bigger issues in this country uh, at the present moment. Queenslanders here are finding it tough to get accommodation. Uh, that be either buy a property that they can afford to buy or, secondly, rent at an affordable price. So they're, they're the pressing issues in regional parts. And I've got to say, Steve, a lot of these regional towns are looking very tired. In fact, they're almost run down to the point where a D10 should be run through some of them. Um, but that's, that's what Queenslanders are really, honestly faced with at the moment, they're the real hard pressing issues, not the voice. And that's why for the majority of Queenslanders, I think in this state are going to say no. Uh, just while we're on Queensland, Anastasia Palaszczuk on her uh, Italian trip. No one begrudges someone a holiday, but it seems like an odd time to be out of the country. Uh, can she survive or are Labor going to cut her down, James? Uh, it's hard to tell. It does seem as though they're stacking the odds against her, but she's faced these uh, challenges in the past, particularly by Miles, uh, the old giggler here in Queensland, and, and he's never succeeded. So let's see what time will, will bring. Anastasia Palaszczuk, don't forget, is still, I hate saying this, she's still a, a popular Premier in Queensland here, uh, and I think Labor are a better chance of holding on to government in this state if they hold on to her.